right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. We're looking at part five of our biomolecules unit. Uh, we're looking at proteins and nucleic acids today. Okay, so when we look at proteins, what we're looking at is pretty much the functions to start off with. So these functions are as listed. So we have hormones, enzymes, antibodies, transport, and structural. Uh, it it uh, forms a nice little acronym called HEAT. So when you're thinking about what the formation or what the function of proteins are, think about heats. So hormones will be messengers. Messengers. Uh, enzymes will be proteins that catalyze a reaction. Which pretty much just means they speed up. Antibodies, which is in the immune response. Transport, which means they carry. So this is something like hemoglobin. Carries oxygen and others. And then structural, so things like collagen, which is in lips. right? The big, huge supermodel lips uh, is, is collagen, which is a protein. Okay, so we need to know this structure uh, here, heat. All right, so what is a protein? It's a polymer of amino acids. So we have one amino acid that joins together with another amino acid, and then finally folds and creates a protein. Okay, so you write that part down. Look at it a little bit more. What is an amino acid? We know that now that that's what makes up these proteins. So there's three parts. So there's an amino group, which is the NH2 part. There's an acidic group, which is the C uh, double bond OOH part. And then there's the remainder, which is the R part. So if you look here, we have the three parts. So we have our uh, NH2. It says NH3, but just go with it. We have our COOH. And then we also have, if you look, all these different types of things that are coming off of our amino acids. So what these are, everything that I circled are called the remainders, the R groups. These are going to be identical in all of the different amino acids. The only way that you can differentiate between them is what the remainder are. You don't have to remember any of these R groups. All you have to know is that there is an R group part of an amino acid. Okay. Organization. So this is how it works. When we have one amino acid, well, it's called an amino acid. When an amino acid bonds with another one, we call it a dipeptide. When we have multiple amino acids together, this is what we call a peptide. A peptide is just anything uh, less than uh, 50 amino acids joined together. A polypeptide is just more amino acids joined together but it's, a, it's more, it's more than 50 amino acids. So the only difference between peptides and polypeptides is their size, okay? So you can pause that and get those down. So we talked about polypeptides just a second ago. It's a single chain of amino acids, and what joins those amino acids together with another amino acid is what we call a peptide bond, okay? So you can write that down. We know from our reactions during the organic molecules. Dehydration is where two things are going to come together and water is going to be formed and it's going to create a molecule together. So when we want to form polypeptides it's through dehydration reactions. Hydrolysis is where the water is going to come, break down the bond, the OH from one part of the water and the H plus from the next part is going to be actually added to the molecule so this would be a polypeptide, well, if we kept going, and then this would be our amino acids again. Okay? Levels of organization. There's four types of levels of organization. We have primary, which we abbreviate like this, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Primary is a nice easy one. It's just a simple amino acid chain, and it's linear, so it means straight line. And it's joined by poly, or excuse me, it's joined by peptide bonds. Okay, so easiest level of organization. Well, what happens is those uh, polypeptide chains start coiling up into something which is called an alpha helix. 
here's the abbreviation, and it kind of just looks like a little coil. Or it can also go down into a beta sheet, which is the abbrevi abbreviation here, and it kind of just looks like a bunch of straight line arrows on a structure. And then finally, or sorry, not finally, the tertiary structure is when these alpha and beta sheets start coiling and forming bonds together. This is kind of the first uh, true protein. So in other words, it will not have function before it folds. There will be some functionality in secondary structures, but it's not until it folds and starts forming ionic covalent hydrogen bonds that it's going to be able to be a fully functional protein. Quaternary is kind of like the, the, the add-on. This is where we have multiple polypeptides come together to form one gigantic uh, protein. So I kind of use the transformers analogy from back in the day. You have all of these little transformers. That's a terrible picture. And individually they work really well, but every once in a while those transformers came together and it formed like this super human uh, gigantic transformer that had a better function. And that would be like hemoglobin. It's made up of four polypeptides that all work together in order to transport molecules. Okay. So you will have to know what the general structure is and also what the bonds are that hold them together. Okay, so nucleic acid now. Nucleic acid, uh, there's two types. We have DNA and RNA. So you're going to probably want to pause this to write this down in a minute. Uh, DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. RNA is ribonucleic acid. In terms of differences, DNA is double-stranded, whereas RNA is just single-stranded. DNA, here's the function, lock it in. It stores genetic code in order to tell the order of the amino acids. So the way that the amino acids are joined and laid out is determined by DNA. RNA, all it is, is it tells, converts that DNA code into something that's able to travel. We'll be looking at the actual processes and the functions of these in a lot of detail when we get into the DNA unit. Okay, so you can write that down. Let's look at what a polymer of, uh, or basically what nucleic acid is made up of. So a polymer of nucleotides is what makes up DNA and RNA. So here is a nucleotide, one of these. It's made up of phosphate, sugar, and a, uh, a nitrogen base. Same thing here, phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base, phosphate, sugar, nitrogen base. So here it is. So here's a nucleotide. It's made out of phosphate, which is PO4, or phosphoric acid, another way to call it. Pento sugar. So if it's deoxyribosugar, that's used in DNA, whereas ribosugar is used in RNA. Uh, nitrogen bases for DNA is adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. And they form complementary pairs, which means the A's always go with the T's, G's always go with the C's. Except in RNA, instead of the T, it goes with a U. So A is with U, and G is still with C in RNA. Okay. So we'll look at the structure of the nucleotide in a little more detail in class. And let's finish off with this one. The last type of nucleic acid is called ATP. We mentioned this already in the carbohydrate unit because it's a byproduct of cellular respiration. And it's called adenosine triphosphate. So adenine and ribosugar links to make the adenosine, and it's linked to three phosphates. So what it looks like is here's our ribose and our adenine, and then instead of just having one phosphate to make a nucleotide, it's got three. And the reason why this is advantageous is that when we break this bond here, that breaks pretty easily. When we break it, it forms a DP, so diphosphate, and one phosphate is released. And when that happens, tons of energy is released. Okay, so one glucose molecule has enough energy when it's broken down to produce. And the reason why we don't use glucose is there's too much energy to be released directly. So you break it down to ATP, which we can break down um, whenever we need to. Okay, so there's a lot of info here, so we're going to go through it all tomorrow, so hopefully it's not too overwhelming, and have yourself a wonderful night.